uh, just, a, just a blessing here. Uh, best we can figure out, we had like 57 first-time riders on the buses today. So if you rode a bus, God bless you for coming. And i uh, excited about that. And let's open our Bible. I know some of you probably have one on a bus or it's in a class. And, and I'll read a verse in just a moment and uh, want to just get right into the message here. Let's have a prayer. Well, what, uh, let me just give an introduction and then we'll uh, pray. Everyone pretty well seated and we're good. Usher's good. All right. Today, some of us don't even know each other's names. Some of you don't even know my name. I'm the pastor. And some of you, I don't know you yet, but I hope to meet you and, and learn your name. We all have a lot of differences. Different sports teams, perhaps, we root for. Different interests. Different restaurants. I like In-N-Out Burger. My wife likes Taco Bell. Uh, I like Don Perico's. My wife likes Taco Bell. Uh, I like seafood. My wife likes Taco Bell. We have different interests, different political views, different music that we enjoy. We're all different. I'm glad that God's made us that way. But we all have two things in common, and that's this. We're all going to die one day. Second, we all want to go to heaven. I've never met someone who sincerely told me, I hope I die and burn in hell forever. I never heard that one from a sincere person. If I had, Brother Brett, can you just get one air unit on? I see some people fanning and, and I've only got maybe 10 or 15 minutes here. If I had two minutes to speak to a dying person, which I have had before at car wrecks, ICU, emergency rooms, I would give this talk that I'm going to give today. If I had five minutes and someone paid for me to be on nationwide television, this is the subject I would speak on today. Oft times when I fly across the country to speak places, when I sit next to a complete stranger, I'll ask them, what was the greatest day of your life? And sometimes they'll say, you know, when I got married, when I had a baby, when I got my promotion, when I went to the Super Bowl. And then a lot of people will say, I don't think it's happened yet. And then I'll just sit there real quiet. And you know what happens. Then they turn to me. And they say, well, when was your best day ever? And then I share this talk with them on the plane. Heavenly Father, we ask that you still our hearts for a moment. We will never ever be assembled again like this. This time next year, at least one of us will not be on earth. Just the odds with this crowd. Some of us will have passed away by then. That's why what we talk about this morning is so important. Would you help us? In Jesus' name, amen. I think it's going to be on the screen there. There's, there's a word right there. And I want us to say that just for a moment, all right? We're going to see which section we have three has the most enthusiasm. You ready? I've seen you at football games, by the way. I've seen you. I've seen you. And so I know you have a little enthusiasm. I'm going to count to three. I just want to hear from this section, best day ever. You ready? One, two, three. Best day ever. Nah, that's kind of lame, kind of lame. <laughs> it's not bad for a funeral home. And so, all right, let's try middle section. One, two, three. Kind of a tie, kind of a tie. So how about over here? You ready? One, two, three. Uh, probably a tie. You're all winners. All right, there you go. Up in heaven, you get a mansion with golden streets. How about that? So some people have different thoughts on what the best day ever would be. So maybe this would be it. Ushers, make sure every person coming in gets one of those cards and fills it out, please. Here we go. Some would say it was their wedding day. California, they'd say, my third wedding. 
is my for we didn't say which one, right? Right? But a wedding day. Perhaps others would be a birthday celebration. Someone else, maybe graduation when you got to throw that cap up into the air, maybe even from a medical school or maybe even from the military as well. Next, gift day, that special gift, a car, a ring, something special. What? Maybe you got to buy a house. Maybe one of your rich relatives that you never knew gave you a house. That's even better. Next, oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, I'm the one behind the fish. That's me. That's me. That's in Mexico. Okay, next. Sometimes it's just a fun trip. Oh, it's the trip of a lifetime. That was the greatest day ever. Others, maybe it'd be a family day with Mickey and Minnie. Next, maybe it's a, it's a cruise. And we took 95 people on the church cruise in January. We'll never do that again. And uh, <laughs> next, hey, maybe a famous person day. Someone you meet that's famous. That's Manny Pacquiao, the boxer. He's the one on the left. I'm the one on the right. Sometimes people mix us up because of our built. <laughs> Here's another one. Uh, that's Mr. USA. And he won the Masters uh, three years ago. His name's Don Smith. He's the one on the left. I'm the one on the right. And I am flexing my arm, so be quiet. <laughs> Next picture. So that's what I look like on my best day ever. I was 12, almost 13 years of age. And that took place, I think the date's even up there, February 23rd. That was 1970. I was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That was the morning Jesus Christ came into my heart and forgave all of my sins. My guilt left me. That fear of death disappeared. I got saved. I got born into God's family right there in my living room because of his blood on the cross. Amen. Best day ever. Amen. How do you have that best day ever? Because that's all that's going to last. It's all that's going to matter. 200 years from now, all that's going to matter is did you go up when you died? Here's what the Bible says about it. I think there may be some Bible verses. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Notice he uses that word day. That's the best day. Next, you'll say uh, uh, the apostle Paul, the great famous person in the New Testament, he accepted the Lord on the road to Damascus at noontime. A bright light shined. So that's him talking about it in that verse. Then years later, he mentions it again in the next verse. And I think chapter 22, uh, where's the next part? Yeah, there it is. And notice he says the same thing. Came to pass, made my journey. Around noon, a light shone on the road to Damascus. Paul kept saying, as on the road to Damascus, noontime, a light, Jesus came into my heart. 25 years later, notice the next verse here. He mentions it again to the king. It was midday, road to Damascus. Light shine. Paul never got over this. It was his greatest day ever. He never forgot it. Someone says, Pastor, how would you know if this has happened? You would never forget it. You, re you would remember the time and the place and the day. So what do you have to know to be one of those people going to heaven, Pastor? Well, here it is. Well, here's the question I ask many people. If you died today... Are you 100% sure that you would go to heaven? I didn't ask what religion, didn't ask what political party, didn't ask if you felt something when you came to church, but if you died today, would you go straight to heaven? If you're not 100% sure, here's what the Bible says. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. The great thing about eternity, men and women, young people, is this. You can know where you're going. You don't have to wait till you die and be surprised and find out if you got it right. You can know in advance, and God wants us to know that. 
We have five children. They all call me dad. They know I'm their dad. And it gives them assurance. Number next, here we go. So here's the, here's the four things you have to know. And, and we're going to be short here. First thing we have to know is that we've all sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Can you imagine if God took a hidden video camera, followed you around all this week, and he videoed your past and your present and your future, every text, every date, every internet site, every word, every motive, every action, every place. What if God put that video on nationwide television for your mother to see and everyone that knows you to see? I don't think any of us would have any respect left, would we? I know I've sinned. I've sinned on purpose. I've sinned on accident. I know I've broken some of God's commandments. Maybe you're here and you say, but Pastor Ray, I've never sinned. Well, here's a little list to maybe kind of help you uh, just, just kind of remember. Maybe, maybe you have uh, sinned or done something wrong at some time. We didn't have room to put all of your sins here, so we just put a few, okay? Anyway, number next. So the first truth, we've all sinned. Second truth is here. We're all going to die. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Adam and Eve sinned. One day they died. Their kids died. 100% of all Americans die one day. We're all going to die. And that's why we have to be ready. Jesus said, if we die forgiven, we go straight to heaven. If we die unforgiven, we start burning in a place called hell. Hell was never made for you or me. It was made for one angel, Lucifer, who turned evil that became the devil. He's caused all the heartbreak, all the addictions, every broken home, every tear, every sleepless night, every addiction. He's caused all those things. And that's why God made hell just for him. God loves us. He wants us all to go to heaven. He wants us 100 years from now to be skipping down the streets of gold, checking into our mansion, high-fiving people for all eternity. That's what God wants. Now, here's the good news. Here it is. I love this part. He says, but the gift of God is eternal life. And guess who it's through? Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's like these gifts we've been given out. We called the name. You didn't buy it. You didn't earn it. We just handed it to you. But it's the same thing with Jesus. He died, was buried, and rose again for everybody. But that doesn't mean everybody's going to heaven. Only those who decide to take that gift. A gift you only take one time. So Jesus Christ must come into someone's life only one time. So it's not how good you are. You could join every church in California. That won't get you to heaven. You could be a pastor, a missionary. You could sell everything you have, give it to the poor people. That won't get you to heaven. It's only through Jesus Christ. You follow me? So here we are. First we've sinned. Without Jesus, no heaven. Third and almost last. He paid for that gift. And that's what the cross is all about. 2,000 years ago, a virgin named Mary had a beautiful baby boy. But he wasn't just a cute baby. He was God in a human body. He was born. Why was, uh, why was Jesus born? So he could feel tears, hunger, pain, loneliness, poverty, fatherlessness. So one day he could look at you and me and say, I've been there. I understand. And then at age 30, he announced, I'm not just a carpenter, I'm God. And he began healing blinded eyes and crippled legs, raising the dead, changing fishermen into preachers, and changing lives everywhere he went. But not everyone believed. You know the story. They crucified him. Much like a gang torture, they spit in God's face. They plucked his beard. 361 lashes with a Roman whip nailed him to a cross, spit in his face. The crowd jeered and mocked and laughed at his feet as they took his clothes and gambled for them. Then that day on the cross, God took the past, present, future sins of the whole human race. We weren't even born, but he reached in the future 
and took the sins we would commit and put them on Jesus that day. He became our substitute. He suffered the hell that all of us deserved. And if you would have been the only sinner in the whole world, he would have left heaven and died on that cross just to save you. He loves you. Three days later, he didn't stay in the grave. You know the Easter story. The stone rolled away and revealed he had risen from the dead. And his last words, I'll say them in Spanish in case you can say a little Spanish. I'll be in Gloria constructing mucho bonita grande casas for you. That's the best I can do, folks. I'm sorry. Let me translate for you to speak English. I'll be in heaven building mansions for you. That's why it's called the gospel, the good news. So we agree. I've sinned. You said me too. Without Jesus, can I earn my way to heaven? Me too. Jesus loved me, died, rose again. We all agree. One difference, if any, and that's this. If I died this moment, I know I'd go straight to heaven. You say, well, how do you know, Pastor? Because 54 years ago, February 23rd, 1970, in my living room, I knelt down, and I realized I had never received that gift. No one had ever explained it to me. People would pat me on the head and say, don't worry, you're a good boy. And every night I'd pray and say, God, forgive me, God, forgive me, God, forgive me. But I never knew if he did. No one ever explained it was a gift, a one-time thing. So February 23rd, 1970, 7 o'clock Monday morning, when I knelt to pray, I said, God, I'm a sinner. I deserve hell. You promised you'd save me. Come in. I believe you'll save me like you promised. And immediately I knew he had come in. Here's a couple pictures. Try to clarify just a little bit here. He says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You understand the first three thoughts? God says, if you'll ask me, I will save you. That's pretty simple. It sounds too simple. Some people stumble over it. It can't be that easy. It's that easy. Jesus wants heaven full, not empty. Here's a couple pictures here. Make it. The devil sometimes gives us excuses. Well, uh, not now. Well, if not now, when? Well, I got some things to straighten up my life first, Pastor. You know, Jesus Christ takes you as is. You don't have to quit anything, start anything, clean up anything, get your act together. He's like the maid service. He'll knock on the door. You open the door, let him in. He knows what to do with the trash. He'll throw the trash out. He'll sweep it up. Sometimes it's overnight. Sometimes it takes years. But your job is just open the door and get him in. Don't, don't wait to get your act together. None of us have our act totally together yet. And I'm 66. I'm, my wife says I'm still working on it. And Well, I need to understand more. Well, I don't need God. Too many hypocrites, by the way. I was at a Burger King one time, and there was a McDonald's worker there. Hypocrite. I still go to McDonald's. I was at UPS, and there was a mail person, U.S. mail, mail in a package, UPS. Hypocrite. I still use the mail. Don't let a hypocrite make you go to hell forever. But I'm sincere, Pastor. Sincerity doesn't get us to heaven. You have to have it right. You can be sincere and drive north from here, and you're not getting to Los Angeles unless you go all the way around the whole planet. It's the wrong direction. Quickly, I think we have some pictures maybe. Here it is. Picture of you and me. The first time we ever sinned, Our sin separated us from God. That's the emptiness in our heart. We try to fill with drugs, alcohol, gangs, relationships, friends, money, success, power, a lot of emptiness, and it never satisfies. If we got what we deserve, we'd fall into hell. Second picture. We want to be close to God. We try to build our own bridges to heaven, and all of our good bridges, they're just too short. Third picture. The good news, the bridge is already built. Jesus Christ, when he died, built the bridge with his love and his blood from heaven all the way to Linda Vista Street in Napa right now. But just because the bridge is there doesn't put you across. It's a decision. You must decide to cross. How do you get across? Here it is. God made it easy. You have to believe he died for you. How many of you would just say publicly, I believe Jesus was God. He died on the cross and rose again. Would you slip your hand up? Yeah, I believe that. Okay. Well, that's halfway. 
You remember the Oakland Bridge when they had the earthquake years ago? The cars that were halfway across the bridge perished. You got to get all the way across. It's not enough to believe in God, believe in Jesus. That word believe means put all your faith in him to take you to heaven. That's what that word means. So we must believe, then, like a gift, receive. People sometimes ask me, well, how do you know if your picture number three, the one right before this, or the next picture? You could never forget it. If I asked you mothers, have you ever had a baby? I've never seen a mother who said, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I'll have to ask somebody. I, you know, I don't remember. Oh, a mother remembers how many hours labor, what the baby. If a man in this room had made the winning catch at the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl, you'd think you'd remember You'd have the winning ball. You'd have it autographed. Your picture would be all over the wall. You'd be all over the news. You would never stop talking about that to your kids and your grandkids. But this is best day ever. That's more important than any event in life because this lasts forever. And you want to be sure you're going to heaven because you want to meet your kids there and your grandkids and your parents and all the people that matter to you. You want all of them to be with you forever. Has that happened to you yet? Has there ever been a time, place, day when you found out all your life was not good enough to get you to heaven and you were on your way to hell and then by faith you opened your heart and invited him in? Has that happened yet? If not, today's your day. Today's your day. Next picture, here it is. Oh, look at that. That's where your picture goes. And there's the date. Here it is, April 14th, 2024, right here in Napa, about noon. Best day ever could be yours right now. Last statement. Here's It's a question. If Jesus was willing to take you just as you are, wouldn't you be willing to take him just as he is? I'm going to have just about the prayer that I prayed 54 years ago when I was in junior high school. If you believe you're a sinner, cannot save yourself and believe that Jesus paid for your sins and rose from the dead. And if you've never done this before, but today you would like to officially open your heart, invite him in. If you would like for him to put you across the bridge, Start building your mansion. Promise you no hell. If that's what you want and you believe what he did on the cross was enough and you believe he will save you, if that's what you want right now, I'm going to pray just about the prayer I prayed. You could pray it out loud. It's too many folks for me to just sit next to you. Usually what I do, I'll say, if that's what you want as I pray, would you put your hand right here? So if you've never done this, I want you to just imagine your hand going right there on my Bible as I pray. Heavenly Father, please hear my prayer and see the many hearts that are represented here today. Some people in this room have done this years ago. They remember where and when it was, but many have never done it because they never heard it clearly. Would you hear my prayer and see their hearts this very moment. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. If that's what you need to do today, if you would like to accept Christ and have that best day ever, would you pray out loud or whisper this simple prayer from your heart out loud after me? Dear Jesus, I know that I've sinned and I'm sorry. I open my heart for you to come in. Put me across the bridge. Save me from hell. And take me to heaven one day. Amen. Wow. You can look this way. According to the Bible, 
God said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you did that for the first time, that you understood it. And you meant that. Who just got saved? So according to the Bible, if you died this week, where would you now go? Is this now you? Back up one. Is that you now? It's just that simple. And that means this, whoever's up in heaven that knows you probably just looked over the edge and said, look who's coming one day. So you made the front page of the newspaper up in heaven. Maybe it says, best day ever. And it lists all the pictures of the people that received that gift today. Then just a moment, you know, I, you know, I don't know how you are. You know, I'm too old to be embarrassed anymore. I go to a New Orleans Saints game and I'm the only Saints fan there. I get booed, hissed that, laughed. At. You know, I don't care. So in just a moment, we've got these certificates here at the front and it just says, today was my best day ever. I got saved today. And if that's you, we want you in just a moment to come forward and just take one of those and then just have a seat right here. And we'd like to just let everybody know you got saved and that uh, you're going to heaven one day. So I'm going to count to three. And in just a moment, we'll have some. And you're not joining anything. And, and we don't need any money. Uh, we just want everybody in the family to know you just became a part of the family. And, and that's it. So I'm going to count to three. If you did that for the first time, you remember and you understood it today and you're not ashamed that Jesus Christ saved you this morning and today is now, according to God, best day ever. If that's you and you did that, would you stand please? Just all over the building, just stand. Okay, would you stand? Just all over the building. Okay. Anybody else going to join these? Anybody else going to join these? I see one. I see two, three, four, five others. Anybody else prayed that prayer for the first time? You got saved today. Would you come? And just help them get one of those certificates and then just have a seat here. Just all over here. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, Taylor, I was, I was looking for you. I was looking for you. And there you are. Good, good, good. Here, just grab one of those and then just grab a seat just right over here. Glad you're here. Others are coming. Will join me. I was kind of nervous, Pastor. I wasn't going to come all the way to the front, but you will now. Would you help us here. Help us here. Justin, just help folks get a certificate and then have a seat. And then name takers are just going to fill out a fill out a decision card here. Okay. All right. Anybody else join these? We're going to baptize in just a few moments and then we'll dismiss you. Anybody else need to come? Anybody else? All right. Do we have any name takers taking names over here? Okay. All right. Anybody else? We can have all the lights on up here.
In just a moment, we'll have some folks baptized, and then we'll be dismissed. If you're in the crowd and you've already been saved but never been baptized yet, you'd like to, you're welcome. We'll explain that to you. You could do that today. How about you? Just all over the building, 